This is for the action takers, creators, status quo challengers, those in love with the process, hungry for knowledge and questioning everything, here to optimize today and fulfill the potential of tomorrow. Why? Because it's in our nature. Welcome to the Pure Sport Project with your hosts, Grayson Hart and James Dollar. Jill Dooge, aka Jimmy Dazzler. Welcome back, bro. 2023, the year of tearing at a new one. How is it? How are you? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm good, bro. I'm after just like, happy to be here. After Christmas, you come back with a uh, new energy. Yeah. Last year was a long, hard year for a lot of people. Uh, and it was a it was a tough and challenging year in many regards, but those years are sometimes the most rewarding. And it's how you look at it. So actually, looking back on reflection, I feel like I feel like I was a young whippersnapper that got thrown to the wolves and uh, battered and bruised and defeated out on the rugby pitch, and then went back in the, in the change room, reflected on the game, and was like, actually, you know what, we did our best. So uh, I'm excited about the lessons and what we've all learned collectively, uh, and yeah, just excited for for the fact that we have this opportunity to be building this business and providing great products and building an amazing community. So I'm I'm grateful and it's good to be back. I felt like last year was some some hard yards, you know, yeah. putting the groundwork in. But I feel like this year we're off to a good start already. I think this year compared to last January, I feel like there's a better energy in the office compared to last January, which was I think was tough. Eh? Yeah, I think. When you first joined, you were you were our first full time employee. Yeah, you, the, the reason I asked that without certainty is because Georgia, um, my little sister, was working remotely, but not full time. But she likes to try to argue that she was before you. But the thing that I've learned about business is when you're like a really small team, everyone's so closely connected. Like like there was when there was like three, four, five of us. Um, you can't help but all be on board. Like you can't not communicate with each other and then you're all kind of aligned and exactly what you're doing. And and as that team grows, uh, it's hard. You, you need to be mindful and conscious of how you're creating a culture and communicating. And I think one of my biggest lessons was when it was like a small group of three, four, five of us, um, that because those connections are so close, that culture almost builds itself Whereas when you build out a team and, for example, you go out and hire people who have expertise, so you're bringing them into a team that they might not be as aligned culturally, like, off the bat with, that doesn't just take care of itself. Like, so I learned a lot. Like, we got up to a team, I think it was, like, 14 at one point. Um, So... And we made some mistakes in the hires, which affected our like culture and some of the like feeling amongst the team. Uh, and I put my hand up and say like I'm learning and I got it wrong. I hired people solely on expertise, and I thought the strength of us and what we're doing could bring them in and they'd learn that culture and be part of it. But but expertise is one thing, but buy into the brand and the vision. Uh, that's got to be the priority, and that's just the learning. And like some of these people that came and went last year they're great people and they were great at what they do they just weren't the right fit for what we're doing so that definitely affected us and that was a big learning um but i say that because that's a huge focus for me this year is identifying how to build like an amazing team culture where people are buzzing and thriving and seeing their progression and growth um and that's been a, that's going to be like a big focus for me because you know like I'm the first to say it. Uh, I'm thrown in the deep end because business had grown like quicker than I thought it would, or I didn't even realize what it meant to try run a business that's growing. Um, I was naive when I started. I was a rugby player. I wasn't like this guy who thought of myself as an entrepreneur. Um, but uh, I, I'm. My my viewpoint is you just learn as quickly as you possibly can. And you know you make mistakes, but you, you learn from those mistakes quickly mm-hmm. and just, you know, try to look out for people along the way and not sort of 
yeah, try try do your best by the people around you. Yeah, I think when I spoke to people about it, I likened it to uh, like being part of a family. And for you, it literally was. You had Chelsea and Georgia, both part of the team. And I think the way that we were all so close together with Will and Dan during that period, it was very much like a family. And I think maybe that was fortunate, but also unfortunate that maybe we took it for granted and thought other people that were going to join the business would also just slot in like they were family. And some people maybe don't fit that mold. Um, Mm. But that was something I took away and I was like, well, I feel like having that culture of like a family mentality, then everyone goes above and beyond for each other in terms of like the extra bits that they do and, you know, how they are accountable to each other and stuff like that, which um, maybe some people it's not the right fit for them. But Mm. I think when you do find those people, they slot in so seamlessly and easily that you just want to find more people like that. Yeah, you're right. Like, and again, it's like, understanding different phases of a business like when it was we really we were setting out on our journey it was all brand new and the only way for the business to grow was for me to get people like you know my wife Chelsea and my sister Georgia um on board because the business wasn't of a size where we, I could just go out and like pick amazing talent to come work for us uh and the people that were willing and believed in the vision, you know, and were willing to do it for, you know, uh, because they believed and they wanted it to grow were those closest to me. And they were my family and, and my friends. And like, um, again, yeah, like you learn so much from that because you can't expect other people to have that level of buy-in because they don't, they haven't lived next to me in the journey and, and know what it means, you know? So, but, but then it's about, finding ways to instill that like passion and vision in other people. Um, but again, I, I think the hiring process is a huge lesson in, in many like startup businesses. And um, I think it's another reason why like founders of startup businesses gravitate towards each other because there's all these challenges that no one else can relate to other than startup founders. Mm-hmm. And like I've been doing a lot of like I love like learning and trying to understand new things and trying to problem solve and figure things out that I don't know and upskill myself. But like I do a lot of like learning and um, of, of other like founders and businesses journeys. And one of the things I keep hearing, which speaks so true to me, is like the founder uh, in a startup is like the loneliest position. Um, and I don't say that out of like um. Because it's like, oh, I feel sorry for Grace and he's lonely because I don't feel sorry for myself at all. Like, it's an amazing opportunity and I'm so grateful for it. But, like, you do feel, like, very on your own sometimes, even though you're surrounded by an amazing team because it's not their job to understand the levels of how your mind's working and what you're thinking, uh, how the pressures that you feel, the levels of communication that you're having with, like, literally so many different parties from like shareholders manufacturers all the different team members trying to understand those dynamics marketing agencies uh sales like so yeah it's it it, it can be daunting and lonely but it's also the way to thrive on it is to to be excited by the challenge and like i'm like excited man so yeah it's 2022 I like, I say it like the before in twenty twenty one for example that was really our first full year as a business. Uh, we were like a we were in like the championship, so like the second tier, and we were carving it up and we we're winning all of our games and we we're performing and we were hitting our tights. And then we got promoted to the premiership, and it was almost like okay, you know, you got to bolster your team and you got to like up your um, training regimes and your analysis and and selection process and like all these things to step up the level but it's not until you get in them big leagues and play those games that you realize how fucking hard that is so you can have the concept of it but when you're in it because most championship teams they get promoted yeah they bring in some new signings they might bring in some different coaching and get some new facility facilities and do some more analysis and recovery but they find out real quick that it ain't the championship anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. And actually what they say in sport is like, if you can withstand that first year in the championship and build momentum and learn those lessons and then further bolster what you're doing, that's the momentum you need to build success. And I really do believe like 
there was times where we were like, holy fuck, the premiership is way harder than what we thought, you know, and 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 I guess what I mean by that, the analogy I'm using is we we had a, we got a certain level of growth and we had an ambition to achieve further growth as a business and we raised capital and, and, and then we realized to achieve that growth, that's like playing in the bigger leagues, you know, and it's, it's a new game, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but honestly, personally, like, I've learned so much from the challenges. Um, and I'm sitting here saying, like, it might sound like things were bad. Like, we had an amazing year last year. We achieved so much. We saw, like, some great revenues, um, built our brand, so many good things. But I guess what I'm saying is it was fucking hard. <laughs> Yeah, but that kind of goes into 2023. We've got a few mottos kicking around for 2023 already. And one of them is um, sometimes the best way to do it is just to do it. And honestly, I think last year, the the learning curve that not only myself, but pretty much everyone else in the team was on, the only, re- the only way you actually learn that quick is by doing it. Yeah. And I felt like it was like there was a problem. You got to find a solution yesterday do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and without that urgency i don't think my level of understanding and my analytical eye and how to you know work with other people would have developed as quickly as it did last year but that is sometimes the best way to do it is just to do it right yeah and it's funny because people around here they like i've always i don't know i've always loved quotes man because it's like what that quote brings out in you and what you may have and what you want to like understand and delve into further from that quote uh so that's why i love quotes from like people who have achieved amazing things or are, are inspiring and then the other day dan because he knows i love quotes he, he he said to me oh so grace give us a quote for this and i kind of i'm gonna have to find who it's obviously such a simple quote but the quote i gave back was sometimes the best way to do it is just to do it and he thought I was joking. He thought I was just like this made up quote that I made up. <laughs> but actually, w- when you delve into that quote, it's it's fucking so meaningful. Like it sounds so simple, but it's so meaningful. Like you can see this example in so many places in life, whether it's sport, business, it, whatever it is. Like yes, it's good to gather information and to understand what you're trying to achieve and have an objective, but. You have to just do it. Like the only way to truly learn is to do something and keep doing it. And then with the view of evolving it and maximizing it and pushing it and learning and growing. And, you know, like especially in a startup business, like you're not of the size where you've got the, all the time and resource in the world to try and like analyze and plan everything. You just got to do it. Mm-hmm. And then you got to learn and you got to adapt and you got to improve. So, you know, and, and actually, if you delve into a lot of the most amazing people in the world, like, they just say taking action is the most powerful step. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I think Chris Williamson is, an, is a cool example because I heard him talk about his podcast. He's, like, one of the top podcasts out there right now in terms of, like, sharing Um, you know, insightful knowledge and information on how to, you know, optimize life, looking at the philosophies of um, productivity and, um, you know, uh, learning and and culture and all sorts. And he he actually said, he he looks back on some of his early podcasts and he was like, holy shit, they were were so shit for for where he is now. Um, But he was doing it and he stuck at it. And he talks about this moment where after like 250 podcasts or something, on his 250th one, he woke up and there was more downloads on the 250th than there was on the whole other 250 before. And to me, that's an example of like taking action and just going and doing it and doing it and doing it and learning and evolving. And then there's like, it can be a tipping point, but it's, it's almost like, there's, you gotta you gotta love the process of the taking action and learning and and take pride in that, mm-hmm. and um, it's like that example that we've spoken about, JD, the, that famous um, image of like the two guys who are mining, mm-hmm. and they they both got their pickaxes and they're like tunneling away to try find the diamonds, and they're both tunneled and they're both separate tunnels, and in the image 
one guy's given up and turned back and he's this far away mm. from the um from cracking the diamonds and like so we don't know when that uh momentum shift will take place but you've got to fall in love with the process like you got to take pride in the process mm -hmm. and uh that's what that quote means to me yeah i think it was actually on the chris williamson podcast as well and i think you've you've listened to this one as well he was talking about how many people have like a strategist or strategy in their linkedin bio or like credentials and there's honestly so many and a lot of people love the idea of being like i'm gonna come up with this strategy i've got this idea about how i'm gonna do this thing however the amount of people that actually go and take action and do the thing that they say they're gonna do i think a lot of people and i'm i'm guilty of this myself as well is sometimes i need i feel like i need all the answers and to have figured it all out before I even get going. And I think it's uh, is it like, as long as you've got about 60% of the understanding, just get going and you'll figure the rest out as you, as you go and just execute the things that you do know and refine it as you go on. And that's exactly what Chris Williamson did. He, you know, records 250 episodes. He looks back on those episodes that he first recorded and maybe he didn't think they were great, but the fact that he actually started and kept going and going and his, his techniques got better and better and better and he learned as he went and then he got to that point where he reached that threshold and even now i know like i spoke to him a couple of days ago and he's still refining his technique and the fact that he's got david goggins to come onto his podcast and it's like the f second podcast he's done in like four years the other one he did was joe rogan speaks volumes of like how good his podcast has got and at the beginning you know he was like me and you now shooting a podcast mm -hmm. no like real experience of how to do it but just getting it done yeah no exactly it's i think it's actually some a topic that needs to be shared amongst people more regularly like because i feel in this day and age everyone's looking for that big boom or like that that big step that's going to change their life and and if we're looking at life in that way we're, we're like living like a means to an end. You know, it's like we, we live in our whole life for this one moment where like we succeed. Mm. And actually, I really think that that's not a healthy or like a happy way to live your life. Like you might have a big ambition, uh, but if you're looking for like the secret magic bullet to bloody unlock it or... Um, or you believe that you are gonna be feel better as a human being when you achieve that goal. It's like the rest of your life comes like a means to an end. Mm -hmm. Whereas have the like my view is like if we have the ambition and the direction that we want to go, but it, but we trace it back to what things we need to do in our life and the way we need to live and the outlook we need to have and the habits and the routines, then that's rewarding in its own, that's rewarding in itself, and you can be proud of a life that's well-lived. And then that actually, for me, is a way better outlook on how to achieve your ambition. Mm -hmm. And, like, because I feel it's quite obvious, but I, people overlook it often as, like, there's a lot of successful people that have achieved big dreams that are not happy, man. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's because they don't, they've not appreciated the, the process, you know, yeah. like, I think a lot of people want that overnight success and they want the, they want the thing without having earned it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I, I don't know about you, but like, I've got a big goal this year. Like I want to run a, a sub three marathon, but I know if I could wake up tomorrow and do it, I probably wouldn't value it. It's the fact that I've had to like put myself out there and put the training in and all those little training runs, you know, like the fact that you're making progress and there's little wins along the way. That's the most rewarding process is like actually doing the work to get to the goal. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the goal as the thing that's actually rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, firstly, uh, it's a big sacrifice for you, bro, because like your reputation as a CrossFitter, you know, is, is fading and yeah. you're not able to lift as heavy and, uh, goes good in the wad so <laughs> you know that big part of your identity nah you're still going good in the cross that's why i've got my alter ego jill dooge yeah. that's the identity yeah you bro you're not as thick as you are. i i like this more streamlined J jd bro you know i think it's more like a bit more like 
how would you say, like a bit more ed- editorial, you know, but model oh, yeah. vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, just, you just need to bring the mullet back. But um, no, I think, yeah, you, I mean, you, you look at people who have achieved, like you speak to a lot of Olympians and and they um, speak about a moment where they worked, they gave everything to get to this uh, competition in the Olympics and to have the goal they had and they achieve the goal. And then they're just like, okay, and they feel depressed Mm. because they're like, now what? But you can also then find examples of other people who have that ambition and that drive and that goal, but they knew that it wasn't going to, like, change the whole feeling of how they are within themselves, but they were still driven to go after it. And But they enjoyed, they, they learned to appreciate I, I don't know if enjoy is the best word because there'll be parts of any like routine and training and, and stuff that maybe not so enjoyable, but you actually learn to like step back and be like, I don't want to o- this only be a means to an end. I want to be able to live my life and, and like be proud of the way that I'm living my life and that be a success too, mm-hmm. you know? And I feel that, that outlook is way more healthy for whether you do achieve your goal or not, regardless of whether you achieve it or not, I think if you're looking at it from a perspective of like the process is just as important and I want to be happy and proud about it, uh, you know, I feel it can cut out that like one, living like a means to an end and two, chasing that false illusion that you're going to feel better. Because mm-hmm. like I've, I've had the fortune of like interacting with some like amazing people that have had great success and like you look at them in, on like social media or on like TV or on the sports field and you're like, that person must just be so happy and content with their life. And there's some very, like very, very insecure, like unhappy, discontent, high performers. Mm-hmm. But then there's some unbelievably happy uh, and content. And it's almost like a f- the way I explain it, there's two sides to it. There's like, you can go out into the world and express your like potential and your uh like your your love and your um your your like energy out into the world from a place of like i am good enough as i am Mm -hmm. and i want to do these things in as an expression of myself Mm -hmm. and then there's another one of i'm not good enough i'm lacking and these things are going to make me feel better so I'm going to do all I can to try to get to there. Mm-hmm. And I honestly think that if you look at people in the world, you'll be able to pick up where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. And because they carry themselves very differently and their experience of life is very different. Yeah. Um, I learned this a few years back, probably like four or five years back, about if you do something out of fear, so like you pursue something because you don't want to do you don't want to be a particular type of person or you don't want to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, oh, you've become this person. So you pursue something because you don't want to become something else. Mm. That's the wrong way to look at it. And you should do it out of a, you want to become something or you want to, you want to chase these particular goals out of the love for doing it. Mm. And how, even though like you're reaching the same goal at the end of the day, I think how you feel about yourself and how other people will perceive you and the energy that you give off is very, very different. Mm. And when I looked at life from that way, rather than doing things out of fear, honestly, it changed everything for me. Yeah. No, I, I think, bro, you're a philosopher, eh? You're like a, um, you're a modern day guru, bro. No, I think that I, I honestly believe that that perspective is the most powerful perspective in the world mm-hmm. because and if we all, I reckon if we all take, t- took a moment to like reflect on our own experience, there's times where circumstances or situations have been really bad in ev- anyone's life. Everyone's faced difficulties in different ways. And some of us can be like way worse than others, but like there's always like a relative sort of like outlook from, you know, who you are and where you're from and et cetera. And I feel we can, if we looked in, in, in our experience, there's times where circumstances or situations have been bad. 
But where we're coming from within ourselves is like, okay, that is bad, but I am okay, and I will do what needs to be done to work through that. Mm -hmm. And then we can all relate to experiences in our life where maybe even a bad term hasn't happened, but we're like worried about it or we're, we're thinking about something that might happen or maybe something bad has happened. And we're coming from a place within ourselves like, fuck, like my life, I'm fucked. Like I am not okay mm -hmm. because of that situation. Mm -hmm. And, and, but, but what's crazy is like where you're coming from can shift. Like you can shift that perspective and the way in which you operate in terms of taking on that challenge or that bad situation or that potential bad situation, your outlook is completely different mm -hmm. and you show up as a different person. So for me, and I can say that like I've had so many experiences in my life where that's the case and I'm sure you've had plenty. Of, I think everyone can have, relate to that if we reflect within ourselves. Like, yeah, I've got so many examples. Like i got cut from a rugby team and and that was my 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 living and my life and like my dream and my identity and it was literally seemed like the worst thing ever and then I stopped being coming from it as like I need this to make me be okay to being like to flipping it to me like hold on I'm still me I'm still okay I got this and then my perspective shifted to be like okay it sucks but I got an opportunity now mm -hmm. to go after it and rebuild myself and you know and I'm, it's being able to understand that has been one of the biggest like blessings in my life like because I, there's so there's so many times in life where when you're coming from that lack and like I need this to be okay you make bad decisions mm -hmm. the ability to shift that and then I think we can all we all know of people in our lives that they come from that space more often than not. Mm -hmm. And you sometimes just want to like, bro, like, come on, mm -hmm. fucking like, it's where you're coming from. Look at it differently, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where people slip into the problems. Like, I know you've spoken about this a lot about the instant gratification because they are pursuing something and they want that, like that quick fix of like them feel make themselves feel good but actually in the long term they're probably not doing the best thing for themselves and that's across so many different categories of like buying things online eating particular foods that are going to make you feel good in the moment but they're not actually going to make they're not good for you in in the long term mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of people because they're in that mentality of they're like i'm not worthy of something or i'm scared of something they reach for these things that make them feel good in the moment but not necessarily in the long run yeah yeah and i reckon like the world we're living in right now is set up where those types of things are more accessible than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, your ability to get food or watch um, Netflix over and over and over or watch YouTube or just scroll on social media or buy shopping online. Um, all this amazing technology that we've got has like made all those things way easier. But what that's done is it's made it way easier to distract ourselves from uh, like our feelings. Mm -hmm. And and the more we, in my view anyway, the more we distract ourselves from our feelings, the more we suppress and then the more like there's just underlying tension or like uh, issues that mm -hmm. like are just fizzing away. Because like, we're not meant to feel good all the time. We're human beings. Like your your mood shifts and changes. And I think when you're caught in these like instant gratification cycles, you what it is is it's like a distraction from your feelings. Mm -hmm. And like you people don't know how to feel bored anymore. Mm -hmm. That's something that's scary, man. Like I've become way more aware in the last few months of my phone. Mm -hmm. And I used to be like really, really good and aware of it, of like not getting it because I, because I, they're designed to be addictive, right? All the social media and stuff. Um, and and I used to be really, good. and but with work and with pure sport, I've I noticed how like habitual and addictive. So waiting in queues and stuff, they I would never just wait. Mm -hmm. Like my, I would always be on my phone. 
And I feel like as humans, we're designed to have times in the day where you might, you're not doing anything, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and even like you go to the gym now, a lot of people that in between sets, they're on their phone. Mm -hmm. And like, so it's about like trying to understand ourselves and what, how we can operate at our best and like understanding things like that instant gratification cycle and that like how dope, like chasing dopamine works mm -hmm. um, so that we can implement things to stop ourselves getting caught up in that uh, so that like our minds operate better mm -hmm. and we're clearer and we make better decisions, our mood's better, our energy's better. Like there was phases last year where I'd wake up, my alarm would go off, habitually I'd push my alarm off, I'd look at my phone, I'd be like, I'll check my email, mm -hmm. I'll check my WhatsApp. Bro, it's like, it sounds simple uh, talking about it, like, because I'm sure quite a lot of people like do that. But sitting here now, I actually can't believe how bad that was for me. Mm -hmm. Like, the first thing I did in the morning was flooded with problems, issues, people I had to communicate with, things I had to do. Like literally from the minute I woke up, like so many, like all these, what our minds aren't designed mm -hmm. to be bombarded like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'd wonder why I'd get into the third, fourth hour of the day and my mood would be down or I'd be easily frustrated or like I felt tired or overwhelmed. And it was because the, the way my day started was to be flooded with a whole lot of shit that I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned now is, and what I used to do off the back of like being a rugby player and just having like that need for like that routine and discipline is I've identified, I need to have a set routine and part of my set routine. And I'd like literally write every bit of it out, which is like the alarm goes off this time. You go downstairs at this time, you have coffee, you have your breakfast, you write your notes on a book, you read for this long go to the gym, like, it's literally that, like, structured for me, because I know that's what I need, not everyone might not need that, but, and in it, I say, no phone until this point of the routine, mm -hmm. and I can honestly say to you, it's the best thing of, it's the best thing I have done, bro, like, for my productivity, my mental health, my mood, uh, energy levels, like, it sounds like just a simple thing, but if I could like, give people one bit of advice on like how, if you could do one thing to make your life better, don't go on your phone for like the first hour of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the dangers of these things, like don't get me wrong, like phones are unbelievable bits of kit, but there are also like massive downsides to them as well. And I think the dangers is like we, both you and I, we've spoken about this and we have an understanding of like, actually, they're probably not that good for you. And you, you hear so many people say, oh, I spend so much time on my phone or I just reach for my phone in between things. But they don't actually understand why that's a bad thing mm -hmm. because I just don't think people are aware of it yet. It will become like just second nature. People will know that, you know, you should limit your screen time and stuff like that on your phone or not pick it up at certain times in the day, first thing in the morning. And I feel like the more people know about it, the more people understand that actually they can feel better just in their day-to-day -day life by just mm -hmm. implementing these little things because they now have an understanding. And I think that's a nice little segue because I know we've been talking already for 33 minutes and we did come on to this to talk about the campaign that we've got coming up this year. But I think that's a nice little segue into the campaign that we've discussed over the last few weeks and that we're implementing starting as of next week, um, depending on when this goes out, but it'll be the 16th of, of January just as I think people set these new year's resolutions and it's roughly around this kind of time, maybe towards the back end of January where that motivation starts to die off and maybe that resolution that they were coming into, into January, like all guns blazing and they were like, I'm going to smash this year. And then it kind of gets put to one side or they start to just drift away from all this motivation that they came into January with. So do you want to, just kind of give an oversight of like what the campaign is, what it's called, why we're doing it. And uh, yeah, just a few more details. Yes. Well, I've, I think like naturally because of all the research and, and uh, what we've all been doing to reflect on things ourselves here at Pure Sports. So we're ensuring that we're living our campaign. Uh, we've already been chatting about a lot of it in mm -hmm. this, in this um, chat that you and I have had, but 
what we've identified is, um, like you said, part, a big, a huge like part of Pure Sports' mission is to inspire people and like allow them to know that they are good enough. You know, and I think one of our biggest points of difference is our view of how we sell our products is to to provide value to people, to educate and to inspire and build our community and create meaningful content so that off the back of that, people are drawn to, okay, shit, like these guys are inspiring and providing interesting information and they got these products that I'm learning about that can help optimize my life. I'm interested in that and I feel our our biggest point of difference from other brands out there in the wellness space is a lot of the advertising is around like what's wrong with you Mm -hmm. and then being like this product is what will fix you and 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 i don't know i think we all can like optimize and upgrade our like way of operating and functioning and mind and body but we don't want to be a brand that like is is creating a scarcity mindset in people you know it's about inspiring providing value and then through that they want to come to our products from a positive view and part of like going into this new year and like really reflecting um on some of those challenges that i spoke about about like you know getting bogged down or going straight on the phone uh, um and, and and like the learnings that we've had from from last year was that in Around the new year period is obviously the time where so many people set goals and um, reflect on what they want to do differently, what they want to achieve. But the scary thing is, in that around that February time, the majority of those are gone out the window because life's busy. It throws different challenges your way. Uh, you forget, you overlook, or you lose that initial motivation and energy. And the whole like ethos of Pure Sport is about like small incremental compounding impactful routines and it's how our products work it's how our community works um it's how our educational and um, content works and so like what better campaign to kick off the year than to help educate and inspire people about the fact that it's not about relying on your motivation or your goals that you set at the start of, uh, uh, in, um, at New Year's. It's actually about focusing on the routines and the habits that you can implement and understanding how to do that um, and how to make a routine turn into a habit that becomes something that's part of your lifestyle and how actually those habits and what you do in the small moments consistently are are what actually unlock optimal performance and release your potential. And it's crazy, like you look at the most inspiring successful people and the trait that they'll all speak about is they just do the little things consistently over and over and they let nothing derail them from those little things. And, uh, And then the other one comes back to what you said there, JD, was delayed gratification is something that they say a trait of optimal performers Mm -hmm. um delayed understanding doing things that might not show you a reward in the right now but you know are rewarding for you in the future Mm -hmm. and and learning to fall in love with those things and make them part of your life and it fits so well in line with who we are at pure sport and all that we're doing and so we've decided our campaign one we want to intercept the fact that so many people fall off the bandwagon because they were they were relying on motivation and willpower and we want to fill them with knowledge to empower them to continue actually focusing on the small steps rather than relying on like willpower motivation so i have our our uh campaign one of the year uh is called small habits unlock big dreams and the whole thing is going to be about yeah educating and inspiring and telling stories and um getting people on board and buying into and being accountable and providing tools and knowledge on how they can lock a habit in rather than just be like a flash in the pan Mm -hmm. um and yeah i'm excited about it man and i and and the cool thing is in the true pure sport um uh kind of like ethos 
we as a team are living our campaign. So as you know, um, JD, we've all um, had conversations and sat down and we've filled out um, answers and then had conversations around them around what are the non-negotiable habits that are routines that we are going to implement that are, that we want to stick to and we're agreeing in a period of time and we're going to work with each other and support each other and encourage each other. And, and it, we're not doing that to see who fails or doesn't stick to them. It's about... One day you might fall off or one week you might not accomplish all the things in the routine that you would like to achieve. Uh, but it's how do we keep each other going and how do we hold each other accountable in a, in a positive way. So that's campaign one. Mm -hmm. I think the accountability thing is key as well because you can set up these ideas and goals that you want to achieve, but sometimes actually just telling someone else about it and saying, this is what I'm going to do that person every now and again may just check in with you and just see, you know, how you're doing. For example, our boy Dan Tem, he said he was going to drink th four liters of water a day, I think, because he just said that he doesn't drink water throughout the day. And he obviously understands the benefits of hydration, not just for your kind of physical, but also like your mental and your ability to concentrate throughout the day. Like just drinking more water is just beneficial. So he's gone out and bought himself a big four liter bottle of water and he's just going to make his way throughout the day. And I know Brad next to him keeps an eye on him and just gives him a nudge every now and again and says, you know, it's like five o'clock and you've only drunk a litre. You've got three litres before you need to get to bed. Just having that little bit of accountability, I think really, really benefits pursuing and being consistent. And then you'll achieve that goal of whatever it was you set out to do. Yeah, like, and, and a big part of what we're, we're learning as we're delving into understanding um, habits and routines so we can bring it to life as so many people rely on their own mind to like remember something or like emphasize a habit or routine or a goal and we underestimate or we just think it's like cliche or not that impactful and so we underestimate how integral it is to stay aligned in your thinking and in your actions to a to a goal or a habit or routine um by actually tangibly bring it to life on paper mm -hmm and then looking at it and seeing it. Um, and it seems like, oh yeah, that's just a concept. But actually what that does is the way our brains work is, it's like the exam, you know, if you get a new pair of shoes or when, when you get a new car and you start to see that everywhere, mm -hmm. the, the shoes and the car were always there at that same level, but your brain is now aware of it. And the science has shown when you, write something down and you make it visible so you stick it on your fridge and you keep it in your notebook or you put it and you put it on your notes and you have it in multiple places that works in your brain the same way as that how your brain works when it starts to become aware of things around you and that's like i i used to think like i used to get so sick of hearing about these like like spiritual like one like trying to be like guru sounding like influencers talking about like manifestation mm -hmm. and i feel like they kind of bastardized that word and kind of like ruined the uh, reputation of what it really is about mm -hmm. but actually like if you think you take away those those influentry people were sitting in bali trying to tell you about manifestation and um you think about what it is it's it's living the values of what it is that you want to achieve or be Mm -hmm. and like I put I break that down into a simple example as a rugby player I used to see young players come into our environment and I used to be so in awe of some of these young guys and like say when I was like in my towards the end of my career like in my late 20s and you'd get these 19 year olds every now and then come in and they lived like so professionally they were like so clear on what their objective was they trained well uh, and they carried themselves as a leader from the get-go. And I used to be like, fuck, like, how, like, you know, and these guys were living the values and the routines and the habits of of what their ambition was. Mm -hmm. So, like, say they wanted to be a British Lion, but they had never even got a cap for their club team. It, they say it was the Glasgow Warriors, but they, but they lived and the habits and the routines and the mindset and the standards of a British lion, there is infinitely more chance that you're going to achieve your success and your 
your goals and your growth by living those habits and standards. Um, and, and of course, like they're not all going to be like perfect, but like the fact that you're thinking in that way and operating that way, like that is manifestation. Mm-hmm. You know, people think, oh, like I just put a picture up of myself in a British Lions jersey on the wall, and I'm that's what I'm going to be. No, man, like you got to under, you got to delve in. Like I heard this cool story: Michael Jordan never stopped trying to figure out how to live the most elite routines and habits and values to the extent where he was the best player in the world he had won like the um nba like multiple times and he got invited to the um uh what's it the all-star game and he had had some injuries or whatever so he wasn't sure whether he was going to go but his reason for going was because he wanted to go and watch and see how the other best players in america were training warming up recovering because he wanted to see if what he was doing was the best and if he could learn anything from these guys. Mm-hmm. Like, and he was the best player in the world. It's like, so it shows that like the complacency for wanting to like live your values and improve uh, in, the, in the best and the most elite, it, it never um, like, it never fa- or no, sorry, you, you, they never allow that complacency to come in. Mm-hmm. One of the the best books that I've read in life in general, not just specifically around this, but is um, the book Atomic Habits. And it's all those little things, right? And it wasn't until probably a week ago, I understood why he called it Atomic Habits. And he basically said like the reason Atomic goes so well with the word habit is because if you break it down into an atom and like these habits only need to be small just like focusing on the little details here and there. And he likened it to, you've got all these tiny little changes that you can implement into your life. And they're the atoms, for example, putting out your running shoes and your running kit the night before. So when you wake up in the mornings there, it's obvious it's in front of you, it's easy for you to just put it on, get out for your run. That's like one small, it's an atom. However, if you start layering these together and all of a sudden, not only have you done that, but you've prepped your meal for the following day. So you're actually going to eat something that's, good for you good for your recovery you know it's low inflammatory and it's actually going to help you so you feel better the following day to do that run again if you need to rather than going and reaching and grabbing something that's processed and it's actually going to make you feel worse if you start implementing all these little things all of a sudden they build up together so you've got all these little habits and atoms build up into molecules and compounds and then what happens is the other word the atomic right it's a uh, what's the word to use the source of immense energy and power and by putting all these things together all these little things all these little atoms building them into compounds so building them into routines of habits all of a sudden you've become someone who's good at running because all you did was put your clothes out the night before in your running shoes and you actually made good food choices and these were the little habits and they all add up and all of a sudden you get good at running just from implementing these very small things it doesn't need to be you know life-changing it doesn't need to be an overwhelming thing if you want to go out and run your first 10k or run your first half marathon look at all the little things that you're going to do Mm implement them layer them on top of each other and all of a sudden that goal doesn't seem so far away because you've done the little things yeah no that's a fucking bro that's a good breakdown man you're like an encyclopedic guy you can thank james clear for that yeah the examples thanks jc but it's also like um i think outline the importance of understanding like why you have a goal and then like if you understand why and the why is actually true to you then breaking it down into those routines that then become habits becomes so much more like um, clear to you as to like why that's important. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have a goal that it's like a superficial purpose behind the goal. Mm -hmm. And, and then, and then it's hard to break that down into smaller steps because it's like, it's not really, that inspired or like purposeful to them. And um, so, so like being like, okay, I want to achieve this goal in running because the why, like running is something that I value in my life because movement to me is so important. And if I run and have this goal, it's gonna create a lifestyle where like it's at the forefront of what I do. And then if that truly means something to you, then you have that goal of like X time in my marathon and then I'm going to break it down into like what I need to do. Mm -hmm. But there's so many people that wonder why they fall off the wagon with their like, what 
their, their steps towards their goal because their goal to them just was like something that they didn't even really care about to start with, you know, or it was like to impress someone else or to achieve something that wasn't like really, really true to them. Mm-hmm. So I think like actually taking the time to really reflect on like what it is that you're going after. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was actually a, I think it was the Hoobman and Rich Roll podcast I was listening to the other day. It's one of the older ones from a couple of years back on YouTube. And they were talking about this and they were talking about like ultra marathon runners and like the feats that they do, you know, they just keep going and going and going. And the thing that separated the people that gave up and the people that carried on going was the understanding of like why they're doing this and the want, like the the want and the desire to do it was genuine. Mm. You know, those people that they're just like, oh, I, I like the idea of it, but I'm not going to actually go after it. They're the people that give up because they don't have that desire. And there is something built into, I don't want to like get into the details of it because I don't understand it myself and I don't want to butcher the things. But if you are interested to go and watch that podcast, it's about halfway through and he talks about it and he's like, these are the people because they have an understanding of why they're doing the things they're doing, you know, running these ridiculous distances. And there's like a burning desire to achieve it that's like genuine. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's actually like a physiological process that takes place to do with like dopamine and I don't know, some receptors and stuff that keeps these people going. Like, Mm. I don't know if you've ever been on a run before and it's actually part of your program and you're like, right, I'm doing this because I know doing this achieves the the longer term goal and whatever it takes, you get it done. However, if you go out and it's like, it's just a wishy-washy training thing and you go out and it's a run that you don't necessarily have to do, it's much, much easier to give up. I found personally, it's so easy to give up. And sometimes you do because you're like, nah, it's all right, like I've done enough. Whereas if it's like written down and you're like, oh no, this is a step mm. in a process to achieving a goal. Like I go out of my way to make sure like I tick it off and it's done. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, man, it's so true. It's like, yeah, but earlier last year, I was finding it was so hard to be motivated to train. And, and then it wasn't, to I got to a point where I really reflected on like what's important to me in life. And I realized like, I, I, I want to feel good. Like I want to have like a functional and energized um, and like an optimally performing mind and body. And I, and I knew that like the mind part was linked to like body and, uh, it wasn't until I really reflect because because I was like, oh, well, my excuse was sort of like, oh, well, like, you know, and don't get me wrong, I was still like doing like lots of run clubs and training here and there, but it was never like anything like purposeful and consistent. Mm-hmm. And I was just fortunate because of pure sport, I was still doing some stuff, but I didn't feel like, like really like purposeful with it. And it wasn't until I sat there and I was like, because I kept saying to myself, oh, um, well, it was easier for me back when I was a rugby player because I trained for a clear objective. Like I wanted to perform and I had ambition and drive and and that was my purpose. And then when I, I kept like using that, I was like, oh yeah, because I'm just not, I don't have a purpose for it. And then when I stopped and reflected, I was like, how do I actually feel when I don't train consistently and purposefully? And I, and I thought, I was like, my mood isn't as good, my sleep isn't as good, my diet isn't as good, my mind does not function as well, like my energy and my productivity are way down. And then I was like, I want to train consistently and purposefully because it makes my life better. Mm -hmm. It makes me perform and feel and function better. And that is is something that is hugely important to me. And then, so it wasn't until I actually reflected and it, like, I was like, yeah, fuck. Like that, that, that I set out a routine and I wrote it down and I set a goal to like stick to it for X amount of time. And then, and then what happens is at first you, it's like hard, it's quite hard, like, because you're, you're getting back used to training and, or like you're needing to make different changes in your like schedule and how how what time you get up and be more organized with food and da 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 so there's like challenges to it right but then you break through that point of like when you build some momentum with it and like when it comes to like training so i don't i feel like that doesn't take long mm. 
until your body and your mind's like, and then you're like, how the fuck did I go without that? Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. But, but I think what happens is, and the purpose of big part of our brand and a big part of like doing these types of podcasts and stuff is like, we want to remind people that like, it's our mind doesn't want to look itself in the mirror, but we got to fucking like take that responsibility on ourselves because our mind wants to, to distract ourselves from looking in the mirror and be like, no, what can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, cause, cause before when I didn't do that and really truly reflect on it, excuses came so easy bro mm -hmm. and they seem so true it's like oh well i don't have the motivation like i did as a rugby player and i'm not a pro athlete anymore and also i'm running a startup i'm so busy i've got so much on and then and then it's like oh yeah that that's, that seems true mm -hmm. but actually when you're like hold on bro check how much time you're on social media check what time you're getting up in the morning check all these things you got fucking time bro mm -hmm. And then you and if you and and you find out why that means something to you, there's no excuse. Mm -hmm. You do it, mm -hmm. and the only way to do it is to do it. Yeah, real talk. So that's the saying of 2023. <laughs> but I, th I think the beauty of that is it's a feedback loop, right? So you put you've identified and you've put these things in place. You've been like, all right, I'm going to do the training because I know it makes me feel better, makes you concentrate more, makes you more productive at work. So. The training feeds into that and then by doing that work and being more efficient and thinking more clearly you feel better about the day's work that you've done which makes you just feel good so then you go back and you're like right i've identified this habit of you know doing the training and like and then that feeds into you being more efficient and then you just feel like there's a sense of accomplishment and you feel proud right mm. you feel proud of yourself mm. that not only have you gone out and done something you're proud of your day's work and then that all just feeds back into yeah. itself and you you identify that, oh, this like routine, this cluster of habits that I do makes me feel fucking good. Yeah. And then you can just add another one in there and see if that works and you just keep feeding into it like that. Yeah. And honestly, that's been a game changer for me that I know that having certain things in my day, honestly, makes everything else feel better. Mm. And then that just becomes one big circle of yeah. like just things that feed into each other that make me feel better. Yeah. And then you build momentum, right? Like your standards for all the things that you do that when your mind's like cluttered and distracted and not able to like that point where you look yourself in the mirror and truly hold yourself accountable, you know, like things like little things seem like such a chore or a challenge, like cleaning up after yourself, like doing the dishes, doing the laundry, like when it needs to be done and all these things, it's like, oh, it's like such a chore. Mm -hmm. But when your mind's operating with clarity and you're doing what's good for you, these things are all not a problem, man. You just do them. Mm -hmm. And that's, you almost find like a sense of like presence and amongst them. Like when my mind's like before, when I was in this cluttered place last year, or I wasn't training and I wasn't like living in a, in a way that was, was right for me. I mean, like thinking, like, oh, fuck, I'm going to do the dishes. I'm doing this. I'm like, oh, fuck, right. Like, you know? <laughs> and and it's actually a, ref that is a reminder to us all to be like, how am I living my life? Mm -hmm. Because honestly, no one's going to make you look in the mirror other than yourself. And, um, and I, and I, and I guess I'm like kind of going on about it because I feel the world that we live in now is so much distraction pulling us away from actually take doing that reflection and looking in the mirror and being like, how am I living? Mm -hmm. Like, because getting caught up in like buying meaningless shit, online shopping, eating junk food, just binge watching Netflix, going like all bloody hours on Instagram or whatever. None of those things in their own right are wrong or the problem. Mm -hmm. Like things like social media and like like food and online shopping, they're all like unbelievable like things that are like a, a, an amazing part of human like evolution and technology. So it's not them that is the blame, it's how we're operating and why we're doing the things that we're doing. But it, But it's only us that can truly be like well, how am i actually doing that mm -hmm. and what do i need to do to do that better mm -hmm. or am i buying shit online to distract myself from the fact that i don't want to look in the mirror and mm -hmm. be like how am i living my life yeah, yeah, yeah. you know 
So I think by the time this podcast out, comes out, I think the, the campaign would just about be live. So how can people listening to this, they probably, they might've seen it on social media already, but how can they get themselves involved and, you know, maybe further their reading or, you know, set their own goals, set their own habits, set their own routines and be a part of like what we've just spoken about here and be part of what we're trying to teach people and educate through pure sport. Yeah. So, so the, the, the whole part of the campaign is like, like what you've said, um, JD is like raising awareness and like, providing tools and information for you to understand like actually like it's about the little things about becoming proud and it's about implementing them and sticking to them and then the compound effect and the build uh, momentum of that so what we're going to do is like, we're also going to share like some cool like q a's and information with some of our amazing ambassadors who are elite performers to kind of share some of their routines and habits that they've got um but also we're going to then create like a little template that people within our community and our customers and, and stuff, they can actually fill that out and share some of the small but powerful habits that they want to implement and like a time frame that they're going to stick to. And we want to we want to do that because it's going to allow people to make it tangible, be accountable for it and be excited and proud about doing that and sticking to it. And so that's going to be a big part of it. So like, yeah, we're just keen to get as many people on board with that we want to encourage you. We want to provide you tools and information. Um, as always, like we've got our community, so um, you know, becoming part of that, and we'll all be doing it ourselves. All of the team here at Pure Sport. Um, what are some of your? Uh, and again, like these don't have to be life changing, drastic things. It could be, you know, setting a routine where I'm going to make my breakfast four more or, or three mornings of the week you know rather than the one morning of the week that i currently do it and i'm gonna um i'm gonna read a book for 10 minutes uh before i go to bed rather than go on my phone and setting something that has seemed small but can have a powerful knock on um so jd what's some of yours what mine is that? mine are actually very simple there's nothing to um extravagant about them but they work for me i've tried them in the past i know that doing these things actually really benefit me and they have like this knock-on effect to other things throughout the day so mine actually start the night before and the first one being that i pack a bag for the following day so when i get up in the morning i don't have to think i'm not rushed around like i've got everything i need when i've actually got like a clear mind my bag is ready to go for the morning then it's um i'm notoriously really bad at sleeping dislike sleep i understand the benefits to it but i have to physically like put myself in bed and know that i need to go to bed and fall asleep so at 10 15 i uh put my phone away i start reading a book i'm reading emotion by design one of your books i've started reading that that's the, um, that's the former cmo of um, nike so that's cool yeah, book. probably got some tips so um and then my lights need to be out by 10 45 like i'm one of these people that you know if i could stay up till two, three in the morning and have like two hours sleep. Uh, that's me. I'd do that. But I know the benefits of sleep and the compound benefits of like getting consistent night's sleep for the following day. So I'm going to try that and see how it affects me and see how it improves my following day. And then in the morning, it's the most simple one in the world. It is literally, I wake up and I make my bed because it's very easy to, for me to get up. I leave at, you know, like six in the morning, just after it's very easy for me to get up, leave that grab my bag and get out the door. But for me to make my bed, it's something that I've done for myself, for my future self. So it's like that instant gratification mm -hmm. thing. Like I could just leave and get it done. I don't have to think about it too much. However, if I make my bed in the morning, I know that when I come back in the evening, I've got a nicely made bed to get into, right? And then it make, probably makes my sleep better as well. Not only that, I've done something for myself. So throughout the day, it's like keystone habit of like, you've done one thing okay, treat yourself the same for the rest of the day. So make sure you eat well, make sure you take breaks, make sure you give yourself, you know, the rest that you need to make sure you train and you feel good about yourself and you have good um, interactions with people. All these things just come from that keystone habit of as simple as making my bed, which might sound a bit lame, but it works for me. So I think that's a cool example of something that like seems like just this trivial thing, but it's a stat, it's a personal standard. Mm. Like that's what I mean when what we're talking about when like we're so distracted in the world to just go out and like get on our phones and 
you know, get caught up in that whole like instant gratification thing that we sometimes overlook the most simple thing. Like I think pretty sure like most of us got taught when we were kids, like when you get to an age where you can make your own bed, it's like it's a good thing to make your bed because mm. that's just like a personal standard that's like good to have. Mm-hmm. And so I think like for me, when I hear you talk about that, it's like, that is a personal standard of you doing something that you know is a right way to set out on your day so that you can take that small personal standard out into the other ways in which you do. There's some quote, I don't even know word for word, but it's like how you do the small things is how you do the big things. Mm-hmm. You know? And and I, yeah, man, I just want to like through our own learnings, and this is not us sitting here trying to like, preach to people or be like on a high horse we're doing this because we know how important it is for us Mm -hmm. as individuals too and we want to help share that with people and we're passionate about trying to share that and so yeah i think those are bloody good ones might be lame but they work how about you what are yours um the one well okay so the phone one for me is like a just absolute non-negotiable so i've got a set morning routine and it's laid out like ex- all the steps and part of that is going to the gym and I won't go on my phone until my, my morning routine's done. Um, so it's get up, uh, go downstairs, have coffee, have breakfast at the same time. I like, I read a book. So part of my routine is read for 15 minutes um, and then go to the gym have my shower and come get ready to come to work and uh, not uh, so so when I say not going I, I'll listen to like an audio book or a podcast while I'm at the gym mm-hmm. but there'll be no like use of like messaging or um, uh, social media so that that for me sticking to that morning routine uh, is something that's like for me it's like that's a non-negotiable for me mm-hmm. because yeah the knock-on effect of knowing that i've done that and knowing that i've done all those things that are good for me like the momentum that i get from that and 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 as well like the resilience that i get for like when shit doesn't go my way during the day or there's a problem that arises or um i can honestly tell you when i living in a way that i'm doing my routine consistently my outlook on things that the way i interact with the world is different Mm -hmm. um so for me, that's non-negotiable. And then, um, yeah, I've, I've committed a minimum of four like weight sessions a week. Because um, I don't know, my, I just, I don't know whether it's because I spent pretty much my whole adult life training rigorously as a rugby player in the gym and out on the rugby field. But I my body feel and my mind feel way better when I do like a hearty weight session. Mm-hmm. You know, good old school prison yard workouts bro. yeah you're putting that size back on yeah. that alongside the market research product development that you're doing as well we got this product that we're working on that's been quote unquote not by me uh nature's anabolic steroid without the negative side effects and you know some scientists have said you better get on this while you can because it's so performance enhancing that they'll ban it soon so, Proof is in the pudding as well. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I mean, I've been I've been going to the gym doing like twelve sets of bench and then coming. Up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a thing? Like, just I when you just go to the bench, uh, gym and do bench. Yeah. yeah so my, my school, <laughs> the social hierarchy at school was done on what your max bench was. <laughs> so this is like 17, 18 year old lads, and we had a whiteboard in the gym. And on that whiteboard had every lad in those two years, their name was on the board and then it had your bench on it, right? Yeah. And genuinely, it was like... Where were you on the hierarchy? I was probably, I think I was top 10. Bro, you got a decent chest on you, eh? Yeah, but it's all for, all for looks, bro. It's purely a thing. It doesn't do anything. It's display purpose oh. only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah. Uh, I've, been, I've been doing a fair bit of bench down at the gym lately but my strength when it comes to bench has never been a, a strength of mine when, during my rugby career I was of a decent build 
but my mates used to call me baby chest because like I had like pretty big arms and like lats and shoulders, but my chest was always small. So you know, I'm just out there working on my chest. So <laughs> big dreams, small habits unlock big dreams. Yeah, small yeah. habits unlock big chest. Yeah, exactly. But I'm working on work in progress, <laughs> lifetime. Um, what about the rest of the day? So that's like your morning. But yeah. is it a case of like, if you get the morning right, the rest of the day takes care of itself? Well, one other thing that like I, this one for me, if you know me, uh, people will be surprised by this. But like, I used to hate the idea of having a, a financial budget um, where like I have absolute clarity on like, how much money I would like to spend in, on certain um, things, you know, like coffee, food, like entertainment, clothes, etc. And because for me, I sort of looked at that as like, oh, that's restricting. Like, I want to have freedom, you know. And I and I and I was like, I'll oh, I'll make good decisions. I just want to have freedom, and I don't want to live like a stringent sort of like life like that with money now actually my view on that has like taken a drastic shift because what i've realized is by implementing a financial budget and understanding like how much money like my goal amount to spend each month in each of those areas to stay in line with that budget it's actually provided such clear decision making and like how i live my life and so what I didn't realize when I was just like, oh, no, I don't want that because I just want to be able to, I don't want to feel restricted. I want to do what I want. Like often I was like buying food or clothes or things that I actually really didn't like, weren't the best for me or I didn't need or even really want. Mm -hmm. And I think like oftentimes like these things can become like, distractions or or mechanisms depending on how our mood is or our feeling is it if we're not aware mm -hmm. and and by implementing a budget has helped me become so much more clear-minded around my decision making and then when my decision making on how i'm living my life by like what i'm spending my money on has provided less clutter because actually what I've learned is when you buy something that you don't really want or need, it creates like this sort of clutter in your mind of like, oh, fuck, like, no, that wasn't really, that was a bit of waste. Or, but then we deny it and it's just this underlying sense of clutter, which then leads to more poor decisions, mm -hmm. you know. So that is one that I'm surprised myself about how much I'm really enjoying it and it's helping me. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. it's, it's like a lot of things we probably discussed here. By having that awareness, you can make an informed choice. Mm. So by having the awareness of your screen time, you can make an informed choice of being like, oh, actually, I'm going to say I'm going to limit myself to this amount mm. of screen time. Or like for me, like being able to track my sleep through my watch, for me to have that awareness, I can be like, right, I'm actually going to go to bed at 10.30 now because actually going to bed at 11 meant I actually stayed up later because of like the cortisol or whatever reason. So just being aware of something means you can make better choices. And then again, that all feeds back into just like you feeling better about yourself mm -hmm. and that feeds into other things that you can start to implement with it just within your day. Yeah. And, and I reckon it comes back. Well, for me, I can really speak to this as like, I have perceptions like, Oh, I don't want to budget because that's not me. Like, I don't want to, I just want to live freely. But I actually always had this underlying feeling like, bro, I'm like wasting money, man. Like I don't need to buy half the shit I buy. Mm -hmm. But I would just deny that and I wouldn't want to look at it mm -hmm. and like confront it because I would have this thing like, no, nah, no, nah, it's just not me. I'm just want to live free. But actually, we if we have underlying feelings about things, we should have the bravery to just fucking look at it, man, and like and see where actually at it like like how am i functioning mm. like and is it truly of in service to me of how who i am mm. and how i want to live my life and and you'd be amazed like sometimes i, I that's my one challenge to us all including myself continue going forward is like just question yourself and don't take your narrative in your mind of your perception of yourself to be the most that or, or like the one that's in service to you most, mm -hmm. question it, 
and and try and understand oh, but can i upgrade that and that's one upgrade for me that i'm like i know for sure is like helping my life so much more mm-hmm. so yeah i think if, if there's one thing we can take away from this is like question your narrative of yourself and can you upgrade it Nice. Tune in next week for more finance advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely don't come to me. I'm 34 years old and I just started trying yeah, to figure out a budget. I've got too many pairs of shoes, so don't listen to us. Yeah. I'm just Buy talking. some of my old shoes on um, <laughs> my wife's depot. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that was, um, I think we came on and be like, yeah, this would be a quick 20 minute podcast and we're an hour and 15 in. But um, Our passion, we're passionate. Bro. Yeah, we've got yeah. a lot to say. But yeah. I think. Um, Apart from that, that's pretty much the campaign in a rather large nutshell. Yeah, that's a good old sized nutshell. Man. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm nutshell. excited for us to bring it to life, and I'm excited for how all of us are like getting stuck into it already as a team. So mm-hmm. it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, and if if you do join in, and I think one of the the cool things as well, we're gonna put out this template on social media. You can use it. You can post it on your own story with your list of goals. But there's also gonna be a send out within the products. That's gonna be a physical version of that that you can write them down pen and paper real old school vibe and just like pin it on your wall and i think that kind of thing when you wake up in the morning you see it and you're like oh these are the goals that i set myself and for the first couple of weeks it probably won't mean much to you but maybe like three months down the line and you see it again you're like oh yeah i've said i was going to do that and you've got these little habits i'd love to see those kind of things and if you wanted to post that kind of stuff on social media or just message us myself or grayson or just message us through the pure sport instagram like i'd really like to see people implementing these things and let us know how you're getting on because that's the reason we're doing this we're not doing this for ourselves we're doing it to see if people out there can optimize their life through the things that we're trying to put out into the world Mm -hmm. yeah get involved there's a whole lot of shit out there trying to distract us from you know doing what's right for us uh and and we're trying to provide a chance to actually be like nah let's shift that and yeah so if you made it this far, thanks for listening to our yarns, yep. and uh, we'll be back soon. Peace.